Welcome everyone. You are listening to Sanctuaries Coffee and Conversation. My name is Myrna Haskell. I'm executive editor of Sanctuary Magazine. This is an online publication for women that empowers and inspires with a focus on women in the arts, women humanitarians, business leaders, and educators who would make a difference in their local or global communities, women's health and wellness, and a variety of topics in inspirational travel and career and finance. You can find us at sanctuary-magazine.com. Today, my guest is Nancy Berger. She is a writer, author, and speaker who teaches people how to change their relationship with fear as it relates to work, relationships, parenting, and money habits. Good morning, Nancy. It's fabulous to see you. Great to see you, Myrna. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited about today. And we're going to be discussing how people have a hard time saying no. And just full disclosure here, I think it was about 10 or 15 years ago, my kids were in public school. I wanted to do some volunteering, had the whole office at home thing, so people knew that I was flexible. So it started with just doing an event here or there, then it turned into committee membership, and then it seemed like I was doing everything and saying yes to everything. So I've been there. You know, I think I've learned over the years to know to say no when I really need to say no. But I think a lot of people do yeah. have an issue with this. And so my first question for you would be, um, why women in particular, why do women in particular have a hard time saying no? Yeah, and that's, it's such a, it's such an important question. And it's not just that we suspect it to be so, um, there's actually evidence to, to support that. So there was a, there was a study done in 2010 that found that women uh, do, do apologize more than men. But the interesting thing about that study was it found, didn't find that men and women have differing a willingness to apologize if they do something wrong. The interesting finding was that men have a higher threshold than women. In other words, uh -huh. men are happy to apologize when they feel they've done something wrong, but women just feel like we should more. So, <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's nuanced, okay. but it's interesting. It says a lot about, and I think it has a lot to do with how we're socialized. As humans, we want to be accommodating and we want to be agreeable. So we're wired that way. But women, I think in particular, are socialized to be nurturing and caring and really just don't want to disappoint anybody. And I think that it has led to an apology epidemic. And if you eavesdrop on conversations at restaurants, if we ever get back to them, which I like to do, you will hear a, just a preponderance of apologies. And usually- Oh my goodness. Oh, now that you've said that, the next time I go out to dinner, I'm going to be listening for that. Really? Yeah. And, and oh I, and, yeah, and I just want to answer the question. So the re I think it's fear-based and I, I really think that the urge to say, you know, okay, yeah, sure. Or, you know, not say no is based in fear. And that's the interesting um, exploration that we can do to figure out. What yeah. So what, so what is the fear rooted behind the aversion saying no? Yeah, I, I, my, my research and my observations, and I write about this a lot, um, and I've done workshops with women on this specific topic, is that they just don't want to disappoint anybody. Like I said before, they don't want to disappoint anybody. They don't want to come off as difficult, disagreeable, mm -hmm. you know, or any of the names that, you know, we kind of associate with that behavior. Women are loath to do that. So they would rather say yes and be then be like struggling with you know too much on their plate or even lie you know somebody asks them out a, a group of women are going out to dinner for a girls night out you don't want to go oh well, i gotta do this thing that's much more much more a much more common tendency than just saying no that doesn't work for me thanks i'll, I'll join next time it's right. it's fascinating but really true in my experience Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, th th this is all resonating with me because I'm hearing you here. Um, so we're all going through difficult times right now, right? So um, ha do you think it's gotten worse during the pandemic? Yeah. So I think any, any kind of struggle, emotional struggle that we're, that we're all facing has gotten worse. 
during the pandemic. Um, and, and again, the science supports it. You know, the, the, the Census Bureau data, different surveys and things that have been taking over this short period of time are showing that just and any kind of emotional mental health challenge is just exacerbated tenfold because of the pandemic. This is not what I would call a mental health challenge, but it is something that I think is a struggle. And I think because now we're behind cameras a lot on virtual meeting rooms, Zoom rooms, um, working through our keyboard a lot more, texting a lot more, where obviously you don't have the benefit of someone's affect and their, you know, intonation. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, it's been new, it's been a new learning experience too for people, you know, the elderly, if they still want to stay in contact with their family members and everything. So yeah. I, I can see it, because I know it's not a mental health thing per se, but I can see it really interfering because people are, you know, really, really struggling right now. And this, everything just about it, you know, the fear of being ill, you know, yeah. not being able to see family members on a regular basis, this whole social distancing thing. So if you're the yes, 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 and you're afraid to say no, that's going to sort of spill out into all kinds of other things because you're under this higher stress right now. So it exactly. exacerbates it almost probably, right? It, it does. It, but it also, I think, offers a great opportunity because we're spending more time by ourselves. It, it offers a great opportunity to kind of sit with it and dig in and figure out where the discomfort is coming from so you can sort of reframe it and, and change your thoughts and behaviors. And that's kind of a lot of the work I do. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked to a few businesswomen, too, who, we, you know, you had mentioned this whole, you know, virtual meeting space and everything like that. And when it first started happening, and I know I was doing this as well, I wanted to say yes to all the meetings, you mm -hmm. know, because I felt like I couldn't be out there. I couldn't be talking about my business. I'm going to have to do it this way, right? Mm -hmm. And it just, it started to become a drudgery. Oh, my God, I've got another one of those, you know? So even though that wasn't a more direct say yes or no, you're still saying yes or no to yourself and what you're putting on your plate and in your schedule, I think, too, right? That's a great point you're making because it comes down to self-care, which is another thing I don't think we're, as women, are all that great at. Um, no. Unless you really focus on it. So yes, you, you have to be discerning and then figure out, you know, where to exert your energy. So you don't Knowing it's okay to put yourself first, right? Yeah, it's not selfish. That's kind of the the conventional wisdom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Well, you know, um, our focus on youth issue is live right now. This is a special issue. It's our fifth annual this year, mm -hmm. and it's where we celebrate young women, young women artists, entrepreneurs, philanthropists. And so I'm thinking, how would you coach our younger audience on this particular issue? Because I think these kids are really struggling right now in general with maybe even more so than our demographic. Yeah, great point, Marna. Um, in fact, that is absolutely correct. The 18 to 29 uh, segment of the population is, is, has been hit the hardest by uh, this pandemic, according to Census Bureau data. Um, and many of 42% reporting uh, symptoms of, of depression and over 35% reporting symptoms of anxiety. So they are really struggling. But when you think about it, young people are at this point in their life when they're supposed to be individuating, where they're supposed to be branching out, leaving the nest. And what, what has happened? They've been thrust back in. And it's led to a lot of emotional problems and mental, mental health issues. So to answer your question, though, for young women, the young population, I would say one thing, start practicing saying no um, without apology, without apology. Now, I have a 23-year-old daughter, and I, will, I can tell you that I started a, a sort of a strategy when she was younger and sort of started getting into an apology thing every time there was any kind of conflict between us, she would apologize. And I actually uh, incorporated a policy where she couldn't apologize for 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> not that she, not that she that never, <laughs> but not for, So, and it really worked wonders. So she really thought carefully about what it was she was doing and then what might require an apology. Oh, I'm not going to be able to feel better about this for another day. So maybe... So I think that for young women, practicing saying no and setting boundaries early on is the best 
thing they can do for themselves. Now, because they'll understand that there's ways of saying things. There's phrases, and I teach phrases and different language inventory that you can kind of draw from, a little toolbox, and how you can say things, because saying no is, we've started to make it synonymous with, uh, I'm going to make somebody upset. So we're taking responsibility for everybody's reaction to us, and that's not our business. So a lot of it is just getting comfortable. Oh, no, thank you. Or, no, that doesn't really work for me, but maybe we can do this without saying, I'm sorry. You know, right. I would be, my life would be made if we could get these young women to just totally stand different approach power. different approach but different still approach. positive yes positive and, yeah and yeah so and, I think and that it actually comes off you come off as powerful mm -hmm. and confident not difficult just right. I'm, I'm saying no right now <laughs> and that's okay <laughs> Yeah, I know. It, you know, it's it's really widespread. It is because I, you know, I've I've heard from other women. You know, they get start to get frustrated, and then they're telling their friends or their family members, oh, "I can't believe I said yes to this." You know, if they had just said no to begin with, they would have been in a happier place, right? So exactly. it, it, it's good for everybody, really. So it's good because all you're around. being more truthful. You're not feeling bad about not being truthful either with other people or with yourself. And it's just a, it's just a, an enriching experience all the way around, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Can I ask you this quickly? So it is, a, it may have been surprising to some that the youth is, is having such a hard time right now because they're so adept at the technology, right? They were always the ones on their phones doing the social media all the time, right? Um, not even bothering, maybe even calling friends, just texting and stuff like right. that. So, right. you know, it is, it's, I think it goes back to what you said about it. There's something else going on. So with us, maybe it was a little bit of a discomfort. I mean, some people were totally not used to using Zoom or any of these technologies at all. And businesses all of a sudden had to start learning how to do it, right? Whereas yes. the kids already knew how to do it. But there's this other piece to it, which is causing a discomfort for them. They're not yes, in the... Because, yeah, because technology is an adjunct to their social life. Technology is a facilitator for them. It's not yeah. a, a replacement for them. So right. social media and technology without the social piece, it, 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 it presents a, a, a real dissonance for that segment of the population, I believe, because that, now they're even comparing themselves more to others. And that's right. what a lot of the social media platforms do. So they're, the FOMO is even worse because they can't do any of the things people are talking about. So it, it's complicated and layered. Sure. Right. Well, that makes total sense. And so um, this is one topic, but you teach people how to handle their fears in all different aspects of life. So I want you to take a moment or two here to let our listeners know how they can reach you, what you're up to right now. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, thank, thanks, Myrna. Um, yes, I do. I do uh, teach and coach and speak about different areas um, where fear manifests itself, whether it's parenting or relationships or work or money or creativity. Um, you can find me on www.nancyrberger.com. And there you can find all my social media uh, platforms. You can follow me, you can email me. Um, and uh, if you'd like to have a, a free uh, 30 minute call to kind of explore your own, you know, your personal journey with fear, happy to do that. And, uh, and oh, you can, and I'll send you a Calendly link. Also, um, I, you know, I post regularly. So anything that I'm doing with media or workshops or whatever, uh, you can find on my website or on my social media posts. And on my website also, you can scroll through and browse around and there's different, there's a survey I'm doing that that's, I'm gathering research to fuel my content. Okay. There's some freebies. There's an ebook on how to have difficult conversations that you can download for free on my website. Oh, yay, so, freebies. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves it. around and I'd love to hear from so check out Nancy's site because she has a wealth of information on this. She deals with all different fears that people are struggling with. So please contact her. I would like to close today by saying thank you so much, Nancy. This, this was a really great conversation, important topic. I'm glad we got into some of the struggles during the pandemic as well. So that was great. So thanks so much for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. 
And so I'd like to close by wishing all of our listeners and our readers good health, happiness, and continued inspiration. Until the next time.